Welcome everybody to the Brave 14 recap show. This is the MMA Buds and I am Dan from Oregon live here in the studios in the 541 and we are joined today with Craig Allen from Fight Nights Picks. Craig, how you doing? I am fantastic this morning. I mean, yesterday was Saturday. We didn't have UFC, but if you love combat sports, we had plenty to watch with Brave, Ahmed, and then the Tyson Fury fight over in boxing, if people are into that. So I'm a happy man come Sunday. Oh, not much, man. It's, it's actually a great week for them because – oh. Now I got your audio. Apparently you had no audio, Craig. So, so say hello to all the people. Hey, everybody. <laughs> there we go. So catch Craig on Fight Night's Picks, and he's got a podcast as well. But I've got his Twitter link right there on the screen, so be sure to give him a follow. And what's up, Steve Sparks, Mike H, and Dave, everyone from the chat. We're here to recap, though, Brave 14, a fantastic event. And Brave, I'll be honest, this was my first time catching the promotion. They caught my eye by doing a global expansion, and then they are also on Fight TV, which I love to support. So I tuned in, and man, what a heck of a card we got from Tangiers, Morocco, the first card, uh, basically international card in Africa. Yeah, I mean, it was the first one that I really tuned into as well. Um, host that dialogue show we were kind of talking about a little bit, but I had one with Owen Young from MMA Sucka um, last weekend, and we talked about Brave um, and some of the other international mixed martial arts companies that are really trying to make a push. And uh, I don't know about you, but I was pretty, you know, impressed by this this event. Oh, yeah. I mean, everything from they put out a road to Brave. So they've got kind of their own embedded show going on. They got great uh, production on their preview videos. Jeremy Kennedy, a prospect, had a, an excellent video made for him. I know that he was supposed to be the main event at one point in time. Yeah. And so maybe that's why he was getting the big push. But uh, when Ottoman Azatar came, that just blew this card up as far as what happened in Morocco. Yeah, I mean, geez, could you imagine if he didn't win that fight? Like, what would have happened? Oh, I can't even imagine if he wasn't on the card. If Jeremy Kennedy yeah. was the headliner. Because that just, the the atmosphere during the, the main event was amazing. But we'll work our way up to that. This was a nine-fight card that we had with some names to look forward to with uh, Jamil Chan, I can't really pronounce these guys' names very well. I'll, I'll butcher it, but hey, guys, you're getting some props over here. And then Keith Lee, a notable uh, U.S. fighter, and then working up the card, of course, Jeremy Kennedy and Ottoman Azatar on the card. But let's start from the beginning, and what I had, I've got some uh, gifts and everything pulled up here. We'll wait for them to kind of load dealing with all my lag uh the first fight on the card though jameel chan i or however you pronounce his name winner by the record fastest ko that has ever happened in brave history and this fight here holy smokes he came out and just starched the other guy and if you love mark hunt because he does walk away ko's then this is one that you need to see he hits him with a right hand and he walked away before i even knew it was over and about three seconds before the ref even knew it was over it was fantastic yeah i mean the refing in this card i don't know if you thought it was pretty suspect i definitely did i mean if we're talking about the jeremy kennedy fight like he was throwing the elbows for quite a while and then just kind of pointed it out to the referee and the ref didn't really know what was going on so that's what kind of took me by surprise in some of these fights but i was also surprised to see that mark goddard was you know reffing some of the fights in the card so he had like the top end and then the lower end yeah, definitely. They're, they're trying to gain that respect, bring in one of the most respected refs. You know, you see a lot of organizations do that. I like that. Hopefully their other refs can learn from the gentleman because they definitely got some stuff to learn. And we'll, we'll touch on that here in a little bit. But uh, <laughs> Joel Asanda says, slow combat, make a gif of that. And then like um, 30 seconds later, they've already got the, the video out promoting this thing here. I can't really get videos to play on our recap show, though, so one of these gifts might do it justice. And 
you're going to watch this guy just hit him with a right to the temple, and he completely crumples. And, man, this this KO was fantastic. It was, man, it was a great way to start the show. Great way for Brave to, you know, make a name in Morocco. Like, I, I couldn't believe, you know, we, we, you were saying the, the Azaitsar fight. I mean, the crowd was going nuts, but the fact that they had, like, this international recording artist, obviously I had never heard of her. And then I checked her Twitter, 1.3 million followers on Twitter. I mean, she was killing it. They were loving it. Definitely. It was like the first 30 minutes was a concert. I was like, are they doing uh, national anthems or what have they got going <laughs> yeah. on here? And then a couple of delays later, next thing you know, she's coming out and singing again. I was like, hey, if you're paying her, you might as well put her to work, man. But yeah, fantastic stuff over here. As you mentioned, um, the next fight was some hometown cooking. A guy was about six and five, and he, he was doing fantastic. He gets to the back of the gentleman. Looks like he might be able to actually start laying down some nice uh, damage on the guy. And about 20% into the finish, the ref stops it. And the guy on the ground is just like, what, what, what? Complete yeah. protest from the get-go. And it... If I was to call out a referee's decision and its suspectness, that was definitely the one. And let me see if I could pull up who the guy was. That would have been Tarek Suleiman was the guy who got the whole tank cooking decision there. But yeah, uh, not a lot to touch on there. Besides the fact <laughs> no. that it was it was really bad. <laughs> But let's jump into the an excellent scrap that went down. Stunned, but Keith Lee survives and pursues the takedown on Jeremy Pakatui. I I don't know. This guy's out of the Philippines. Both of them are prospects. I believe under 23 years old. The yeah. guy was 23, and then Keith Lee's only 21. They had an excellent back and forth scrap, but ultimately Keith Lee ends up losing the split decision here, and I believe that's two in a row that he lost split decisions for him. Yeah, two two split decisions in a row. I was talking to Kyle Volkman on Twitter. Um, we were both watching the fight and, and tweeting back and forth, and, you know, Keith Lee is a guy that we were both looking forward to seeing. Um, you know, he really tried to employ a wrestle-heavy offense that didn't work for him overly well. I mean, he was going for the takedowns, going for the takedowns, pushing uh, Pacatu up against the cage, and then he couldn't get it. And at the end of the first round, I thought, geez, I mean, Keith Lee picked him right up over his shoulders. He looked like he was going to slam him, end the round, win the round. But no, he just kind of threw him across the ring, and maybe it was a takedown. I don't know. But I was really disappointed in Keith Lee. I mean... I figured you're you're going on a different stage in Brave. You got your brother Kevin in your corner. I mean, extreme couture, extreme couture, and this Pakatu kid. I mean, he was known for his you know stand up, his Muay Thai stance, um, and and he did clip Keith Lee at a couple of points. But yeah, I definitely had Pakatu winning um, two of the three rounds for sure. Yeah, I think you know we could we could hate on Keith for his game plan and his takedowns, or we could you know give props to jeremy for his takedown defense yeah it exactly was excellent man it was. excellent takedown d for him and i don't think he saw that coming and getting lit up on the feet that just it, it definitely messed him up and to your note extreme couture did go one and one on the night i'm surprised yeah. you know <laughs> i would get so bummed out if i watched my teammate lose i think that would really affect me if i so, watch my brother lose yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, Kevin wasn't there fighting. He was just there being the, uh, what do you call it, the cornerman for uh, Jeremy Kennedy as well, who recently made the transition over to Extreme Couture. And we saw some greatness out of him. But let's work our way up the card. Next one I got is Ikram Azimarov advances to 6-0, and defeating Joey can't pronounce his last name by first round stoppage and this uh tweet here is via nolan kings is mma underscore kings always doing great work out here and what a great fight man we had so many awesome finishes over here the pacing i i love brave man did you get a chance to watch birkenbosch's intro uh i think i caught it but it was it was like a rocky intro. It had Sylvester Stallone, and then it had like a pretty cool intro song. Like the guy got it. He looks super intense. Like I, I don't know if he's taken extra supplements, but he looked pretty good. 
and gets in there all tatted up. And then Alex Skarov just walks in there. And yeah, I mean, if I can see that video there, he had him flattened right out and he was, he was throwing some hard punches. So yeah, I mean, good fight for a guy. I mean, he's six and one or six and oh now and Birkenbosch now at three and one. Yeah. And what I do know about Birkenbosch is he was a late notice opponent. We didn't find yeah. out until just a few days before the event. And if you look at some posters, you won't even see him on the poster. You got the wrong one. They had to update this thing and everything. So he came in on short notice. Hopefully he got himself a nice payday. And he got to take in, you know, a pretty awesome event out there. So we'll see. But then moving on next, Sean Satilla, who, you know, an American flyweight, 33 years old. And he's been in the game a while. Takes on Alex. Alexov, I can't pronounce these Russian names, but uh, this was an excellent flyweight contest here. These guys were going at it. Let me see if I get the right gift pulled up. Here we go. Yeah, I mean, that, that was one of the fights of the night. Um, and I did, like I said, um, my stream kind of cut out around the Efrain. I think it was right after the Efrain fight. So I watched the uh, the other three this morning. And uh, yeah, Alkasov and Santella, man. Santella really seemed to want to bring the the fight to the to the mat. He looked like he wanted to pull guard or kind of lay down. I mean, he did get clipped quite a few times, but yeah, that was an impressive fight. I mean, a guy with a record now of twenty and seven taking on a guy who at the time was four and zero. I mean, that's a pretty tough test for for the younger guy um, or the less experienced Alcazar. But yeah, good fight in general. That like if you missed that one, go back and watch it. It, it was good. Man, at certain points in the time, it looked like Donald Cerrone versus Miles Jury. <laughs> Santilla was just on the ground, kind of trying to butt scoot and get to a yeah. better position. And just leg kick after leg kick after leg kick. And the next thing you know, Santilla starts throwing these weird like cartwheel kicks. The only thing he can try and do. But I, I love that they were actually allowing kicks from the bottom. But I saw Santilla yeah. kind of playing the game where he had one knee on the mat to try not take head kicks or something. I don't know if Scintilla, if he's a great wrestler, but he went like 0 for 12 on takedowns. I don't know. Yeah. At the end of the fight, he was still pursuing it. And I was like, man, what are you doing? But a great uh, win for Alahasov. And he is going to be, um, he got announced that he's going to be fighting for the flyweight championship over there. Yeah, right? and yeah so that's not too bad. I think uh, they don't even have a flightweight champion right now. No. No, yeah. So he's going to get the first crack at that. And so awesome stuff there. <clears throat> and then moving on, the next one I got to highlight is Felipe Efrain. And this guy just put on a clinic against this uh, Arnold Quiero guy. I, I can't put it any better than that. The guy threw like 25 punches and landed 20 of them, or 15 and 20. It was just shot after shot landing. Let me see if I can get this gift pulled up here so you guys can watch. It, it was quite some amazing stuff, man. I'm, I was impressed with this guy's striking. Yeah, I mean, I'm pulling up the video here right in front of me. Um, you know, he's on top. Uh, yeah. I mean, it was over as quick as it started, right? Like, how, when did it end? Uh, 40 seconds in the first round. And, I mean, he was one of those guys that they were pushing. Um, they've been pushing a lot of Brazilian imports. So, mm. Efrain was one of those guys that they wanted you to watch. And, uh, yeah, that was an impressive, uh, impressive fight. Definitely, man. It was so quick. Bada bing, bada boom, in and out. <laughs> and I'll definitely be tuning in for his next fight. What else we got here? More yeah, that was hard. yeah. They they had to bring in the they had to bring in extra physicians for that one. Extra physicians. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> when when he knocked out Quero, yeah, they brought extra guys in, and he he hopped out of the ring to thank uh you know the the top brass there in Brave. So good to see for him. I mean, I'm sure you know that helps when you're trying to get a title shot. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and a lot of them they they know how to go kiss the ring, man. And over here. <laughs> That's kind of how it works, so you got to do what you got to do. <clears throat> and moving on from the card, Abadul Abaduragimov, 8-0, just trucked a very tough opponent in Sydney Wheeler. And he's not joking here, Sydney the American going over there, but man, he, did he get taken out in emphatic fashion. Abadul walks away with the finish in this fight. Yeah, Wheeler almost looked 
lost on the ground. I mean, as soon as it went down, it was done. And uh, Abdur Kimov, man, he threw yeah a lot of punches. I mean, how many? There were nine fights and seven finishes. So, I mean, just another one to bite the dust. But, yeah, Wheeler, I, I don't know what's next for him. I mean, he fought a lot um, in Valor, you know, on the regional circuit in the Midwest. So we'll see what happens uh, with him going forward. Mm-hmm. I, I like it, though, man. Definitely give these international guys a test. If you study the UFC like I do, when they bring in the international fighters, let's say from uh, over in Europe, they always pit them up against themselves and then Brazilians, and then eventually you'll move on to an American after that. And so, hey, they're bringing in some Americans. Make sure these guys got their wrestling on par. I, I like it, man. Why not? For sure. I guess that's just, you know, that's just the... <laughs> All the all Americans are good at wrestling, right? That's the stereotype. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And holy smokes, our a new man that I found out I gotta follow over on Twitter, and that is Al. And follow him at P H R E. Very simple over on Twitter. This guy's dropping some awesome gifts, and he's got a gift here of Jeremy Kennedy starching the poor man. You already referenced this earlier with the the suspect refing. They couldn't get Mark Goddard because it was the co-main event. You can't work it twice in a row. So he gets the other guy, and man, it was just – he completely controlled him for two minutes, gets him to the ground. The guy just he, – he stayed in half guard the, the whole time just trying to hold on, and eventually Jeremy gets a little bit of posture, lands some elbows, and has to tell the ref that the fight is over. Yeah, I mean, if you didn't get a chance to watch the fight, Kennedy took it to the ground really quickly. Um, he held that, what was it, his right arm over um, Daniel Pilo for, you know, the entirety of the duration, I guess. And then he'd land a couple elbows, reset, land a couple elbows, and then it looked like he was going to go for Kimura. He, he kind of faked that, landed some more elbows, and then finished the fight. So um, Junior Bacon Cheeseburger, we'll see if he becomes full cheeseburger. That's my favorite Mike Goldberg uh, comment about <laughs> Jeremy Kennedy and his nickname. So, I mean, yeah, I was really impressed. Uh, like, he was one of those guys I listened in to your, uh, your preview show for Brave. And, I, I mean, I totally agree with you guys. I don't know why the UFC decided to let him go. They didn't want to pursue him any longer. I mean... He went three and one in the UFC, and I had a guest on on my show at one point, Gerald Harris. He went three and one in the UFC. Um, he's got four slam knockouts on his record, but the UFC decided they didn't want him anymore. And Jeremy Kennedy, man, special talent. Um, you know, he rocks that Canadian flag, so I, I have to be a fan. And uh, yeah, I mean, he looked really good. Definitely, I think in the uh, after the fight interview, he had said. You know, because he got caught off losing Alexander Volkanovsky, who turns out pretty good. And so he came in. He's like, I can't let that happen again. I got to come out here and make a statement. And he sure did make a statement with those elbows. And I believe they asked him, do you want the featherweight title fight coming up next? And, you know, I think he's going to take whatever they're going to give him over there at Brave. So props to you, Jeremy. We'll see what happens in your near future. You're going to be a star over there in Brave, though, man. Yeah, for sure. Heck yes. And what else? I think we might have a celebration over here from Nolan King. What's going on in the chat, though? Two split L's in a row for Killa Keith, says Steve Sparks. Yeah, that kind of sucks. Someone said on Twitter he could easily be 5-1, and one, and I can totally see that. Yeah. But, yeah, here's your celebration from Jeremy. And man, the MMA's got the highest highs and the lowest lows, so it's always nice to see a guy bounce back and get the W. But moving on, Brave going into their main event. It got crazy, man. It sounds like the whole crowd, the whole Moroccan crowd was singing. I don't know if it was a national anthem or what, but the whole crowd was getting into it. They got flag on top of flags with the Tangiers. He came out with his whole entourage, like 15 deep or so. I, I was loving every minute of it. What about you, Craig? Man, yeah, that was a totally awesome intro. Like I said, I, I ended up watching it this morning, and uh, the whole crowd was into it. Like the flags, the the intro. Like like you said, I mean, I, you watch a lot of international events, um, and and my favorite promotion so far has been uh, ACB. I mean, I love the pacing, the intros. Like I'm thinking. 
it was ACB 88. No, 87, when they had three title fights, and it was supposed to be four. And they had everybody coming in, multiple video screens. And I think that's kind of what Brave looks like they're going for. I mean, they're putting a lot into their promotion, um, videos, the, the quality of everything. So I thought it was awesome to have, a, like, a homegrown, hometown star. I mean, 10-0 and 0 going into the fight. Like, Otman, as I said, he's a big deal for not just Brave, but Morocco in general. Mm. Definitely, definitely. I don't know what the hiccup was to actually get him on this card. If he had an injury, yeah. if it was um, contract negotiations, I have no idea. But he came in. He's the 155er coming in at 170. So I kind of assume it was definitely late notice on whatever was agreed to. But he got an excellent matchup. This Serbian that he fought had won nine of his last ten. Ottoman yeah, exactly. here with 10 victories. So even though you look at the record, this wasn't exactly, you know, just some can getting thrown at you. It was a solid opponent. It, holy smokes, did he make quick work of him. 31 seconds in with a shot and some ground and pound. That was it. And if you if you think, oh, it was a quick stoppage by the ref or something, go back and watch the video. He doesn't get off the floor for a few minutes. He's laying there, and he's not, you know, going to Mark saying, what are you doing? None of that. He's like, he just took his beating and laid there. So excellent stuff over here by Ottoman Azatar. Yeah, that was an awesome fight. And like you said, I mean, the guy who's taken on the Serbian uh, with all those wins in a row, and then he had a point in his career, like he went, what, one and four to start his career. He lost three in a row. And then at one point he lost six in a row, but he's kind of gotten back on the on the wagon um, and he was he was winning fights. So it wasn't just some random guy that they threw at the hometown guy. I mean, as I said, like you said, I mean, moving up in weight, um, look good at welterweight. I'm sure he looks really good at, at lightweight too. If he's got knockout power like that at lightweight, that's uh, that's something special. Not just for um, not just for Brave, but in general. I mean, the lightweight division in in most MMA promotions is the deepest there is. I totally agree. I totally agree. And that's a big jump to make that 15 pounds. Hopefully, we'll see him back at 155. I do want to mention real quick, Jeremy Kennedy's opponent. Um, P- P- look, he looked kind of undersized. Maybe Jeremy's he looked, just cutting... he looked like a fat uh, Ian McCall is what he looked like. A fat <laughs> Ian McCall with a beard. Yeah, he did. But definitely a little undersized compared to J- Jeremy. So I don't know if Jeremy eventually needs to move up a weight class as he gets bigger and older. But he's super young. So, man, put, put that off. Whenever it feels like it's getting too tough, then you can do it. Don't go right away. Make your Makes name sense. at Featherweight because it's much easier way easier at featherweight and holy smokes they at the very end they shower him with confetti just the, yeah. the red and the green a celebration that was built for a champion built for someone coming to their hometown to get the w i can't imagine what would have happened if he would have lost because there's not there's not a different serbian color co- confetti coming down <laughs> it's just you know people walking away upset and that would have been a bummer Yep. Man, but that yep. that was Brave 14. I can't wait till the next one. We got Brave 15 going to Colombia. And if you guys paid attention to the global expansion, we're supposed to be getting three events a month. So stay tuned for this. They're going to Abu Dhabi. They're going to Saudi Arabia. They're going to Pakistan. They're going to India. Man, these guys are going all over the place. If there's a country that the UFC has not been to, look for Brave to try and get in there. That's basically what I could see. Yeah, I mean, if it's not Brave, it's going to be somebody else. And that's been one of the big things I've been talking about with guests on all of my shows. You know, the UFC looks like they're not trying to push into Europe anymore. They look like they're not going for that big global expansion. They've gone for Southeast Asia um, and Oceania as well. But yeah, it's just kind of weird what the UFC is doing. I mean, I'm fortunate we're going to get a card two hours away from me in Moncton, New Brunswick, Canada, a city of 250,000 people, which it's great for us. And I mean, you're going to draw from every province around, but why wouldn't you go to like a Tangier, Morocco or a big city or like a Mendejin, um in Colombia? Like there's so many other places they could go, but they just choose not to. Who knows, man? I know. I I'm a fan of them going to these small ice rink arenas. I think it's a a (laughs) no-brainer. Number one, I hate when the UFC goes into a big arena that could fit 20,000 people, and there's only like eight or 9,000 there. What is that? I don't want to see that. 
Yeah, but you think of some of the smaller cards, like they tried out um, Chile. Mm-hmm. Eh, it was all dead air. And then you look at um, Utica. Utica was a good card, and I watched it start to finish, but the crowd wasn't into it. And by the main event, I mean, you had kind of a hometown guy in Jimmy Rivera um, fighting in New York against Marlon Marais, and it was a great fight, and it was over quick, but who was there to see it? All the local people that live in the rural areas, man. I don't know. I, yeah. I, I look at cards. Boise, complete sellout. 6,000 people strong. Yeah, Boise was good. Go Mon- Moncton's, Moncton's going to be really good. Sorry to cut you off. Moncton's no going to be a hell of a show. I mean, I looked at the, the Ticketmaster prices right now, and the cheapest ticket I could find was $296 Canadian. So, I mean, take 25% off of that. That's your American price. But, I mean, it's going to be like if UFC Halifax, which – you can't see it in the video, but I've got the Travis Brown and Derek Lewis um, poster up behind me. Mm-hmm. That was uh, that was a crazy event. And, I mean, you had a local guy, Gavin Tucker, with his coming out party against Sam Cecilia where he just kind of clowned him. And it reminded me of uh, Dominic Cruz when he fought Cody Garbrandt. It was the same, like, Tucker did the same thing that, uh, that Garbrandt did. So, I mean, it was an awesome event. And I'm sure these these fans in Moncton, you're going to draw from Nova Scotia, you're going to draw from Maine and and everybody in, in New England as well. So it's going to be a hell of a card. Um, you get Anthony Smith taking on Volkan Uzdemir, so you can't go wrong there. And uh, it's going to be a lot of uh, Bud Lights and uh, Ric Flair woos. <laughs> that will happen. Yeah, uh, I'll give my one gripe when I go to UFC events actually live. They don't let you out and in. At least at all the arenas I go to, you're there for seven hours. If you're like me and you want to come watch the fight pass prelims, man, get ready to spend 20 on food and 40 or 50 on drinks because you're there forever. That shit is no joke. And, man, besides that, make sure to tune in for more Brave News in the future and definitely ACB. ACB is coming back. I think they've got a card the 31st of this month, I believe. Yeah, they got ACB 89 and ACB 90 that they rescheduled. Um, and they, you know, they stacked those cards. So fingers crossed the money's flowing and uh, and everything can line up well. Heck yeah. So uh, we'll pray for you, International MMA and all your organizations. We definitely want you all to succeed. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in today for the Brave 14 recap. Craig, where can everyone find all your stuff? You can find me at Craig Allen FNP at Fight Night Picks on Twitter. You can find the website FightNightPicks.net. Um, just threw out an SSL and opened up a shop yesterday. So you can pick up some nice gear. I got the hats. I saw Nolan on here. He's, he had the shirt. I got the sweater. There's all sorts of good stuff there. Um, yeah, I mean, check us out on, on YouTube, Fight Night Picks. Um, I have a lot of interviews, fighter interviews. I had Heather Hardy on this week as well as uh, two division champ terry brazier who just signed with bellator andy nesbitt from bellator and logan storley who fought on friday and got the win over aj matthews so lots of stuff going on with uh, with fight night picks and hopefully we can have uh, dan from oregon on uh, on some of the shows i would be happy to join you guys and we'll definitely try and get you back craig and until next time back to all you sickos we're out of here peace